What's up, guys? This is Kefis. Today, I'm going to show you some macros that I've created with GNOME Sequencer Enhanced, an extremely powerful add-on that allows you to create robust macros that can perform most, if not all, of your rotation with a single button. This can be extremely useful if you have a disability like myself, or if you just want to be lazy. Bear in mind that these macros can be extremely helpful, but they also have their limits, so they're made primarily for those who are playing the game at a more casual level but feel free to use them as you see fit. If you'd like to learn more about GNOME Sequencer and how to use it, I recommend that you head over to WoW Lazy Macros. You can find links to all of that and to import strings for these macros in the description. Today, we're gonna to check out the macro that I've created for Melee Hunters in Season of Discovery. Yes, this is a thing and it has been a lot of fun to play. So before we actually take a look at the macro, there are a few things that I would like to go over first. First thing I want to check out are the runes that I'm currently using. I'm using an add-on to show the runes that I don't have because I don't have them all. I'm not at max level. I'm still leveling every class up, trying to get them up as much as I can so I can get guides out as quickly as possible, help as many people out as I can. And it's taking a while, so I feel like I'm at a good enough point where I can make a fairly decent macro that'll work even better once I do hit max level. So I feel like I know everything I need to know. But I don't have all the runes I want. Obviously, Master Marksman isn't ideal for melee hunters uh, by any means, but it's all I have for now. Eventually, I'm going to be getting uh, a Heart of the Lion. That's going to be even better, and that's what I'm going to run with. So that's where we're going. But for now, uh, Master Marksman. So it is what it is. Uh, with legs, really, you only have one option here. If you're melee hunter, it's the most important ability in the melee hunter rotation, and that is flanking strike. This is really useful, though. Uh, it's just what you want to go with. It's going to just be core to the rotation of, uh, you know, of the class. So that's what we're going to go with there. Got it pretty early, though, so I was able to start trying out melee hunter pretty quickly, which was pretty cool. Now, here's the thing, okay? Carve is the obvious melee choice and i think that in a group environment when you're fighting multiple enemies it can be really good okay so carve might be the way to go when you're doing dungeons uh, you know and you're fighting multiple enemies but for me since i do a lot of open world stuff i'm actually still using the beast mastery room and that's fine i mean for for even for melee hunter it's not a big deal carve isn't that strong right now i don't feel uh, but beast mastery is pretty incredible and it's just going to make your beast do even more damage, your pet, and you're gonna be using your pet anyways. So it's not entirely useless to go with Beast Mastery if you have it. And in fact, as you can see here with my build, I'm still rocking a Beast Mastery build, and I'm gonna go through my thought process here. Now, please keep in mind, you guys, I am no authority on class builds for Classic WoW, especially in Season of Discovery. I don't know what the right way to go is. My instinct because of retail is that if you're going with a melee hunter, you probably go down the survival tree, but there really isn't a lot here that I feel is all that beneficial for melee. There's only one talent that improves melee, and that's this one here. It increases critical strike chance for raptor strike and hungry spike, which is nice, admittedly. But that's it. I mean, you, you obviously you can go with these, which will increase your damage for certain enemy types. You can go with both of those. And there are a couple other things that are okay here, I guess. Like, you could increase your health, but, I mean, if you have a pet and you're in dungeons, you're not a tank, so how helpful is that? I just don't feel like there's a lot in here that's all that impressive for melee hunters at all. I really don't. And so I just, for now, I'm not going with that. On top of that, I'm also messing around with Beast Mastery range anyways. So I'm just sticking with my Beast Mastery build for now. Now, for melee hunters, I obviously wouldn't go with improved hawk uh, you know I, that wouldn't be useful <laughs> for melee hunters but i would certainly add a few more points into my pet's health which would be even crazier with beast mastery but if i was using carve this would be a lot more helpful for sure so that's a way to go so i'd probably switch from this to this honestly and then just kind of go down the normal beast mastery build i think it's really what i would probably do uh just in, you know in, increase pet armor you know revive pet pet damage your pet's gonna be there so you kind of just be a beast mastery 
a melee beastmaster hunter, I guess is kind of the idea that I'm going with right now. Now, I did think about um, this improved aspect of the monkey. This would increase your dodge, increases you know, the dodge, of your, yeah, increases dodge bonus, right? So that's what that would do. Okay, sorry, I had to read that for a second. And I guess that could be useful. Now, I suppose to do that, because like if you dodge more, then you're going to be able to use Mongoose Bite more is what I'm thinking. But then you probably want to turn off Growl and just tank and have your pet not tank. And I don't know if that's worth it, honestly. I just, <laughs> you know, so I don't even know if that would be worth it. I just feel like it's easier and better to just buff your pet as you would if you were a Beast Mastery Hunter and play melee because it's fun to hit things with a big sword next to your pet, I guess. So it's fun to do and it's not that bad, honestly. So that's the build I'm going with. Again, I'm no authority here, you guys, so don't. You know, take take what I'm doing with a grain of salt. It's not going to impact the macro either way. Do what feels right to you. I'm sure there are plenty of guides out there that are good at min-maxing. Obviously, we're here making macros, so we're not too preoccupied with min-maxing, honestly. Uh, but this is what I'm going with. I wanted to kind of explain that and maybe get some thoughts from you guys. If you have a build that you think works better, let me know about it in the comments below. But like I said, I'm just making the macro. It doesn't matter all that much, but I like to show my builds because people like to see them. With all that being said, let's go ahead and finally take a look at the macro itself by typing slash GSE. This macro is called Kef Hunter Me, uh, which is short for melee. And this is an all-in-one macro for melee hunters. So we're gonna right click that and let's go ahead and take a look at the actual macro itself. So this is an incredibly straightforward macro because you only have a few abilities that you're going to be using. This is a straight up sequence macro. It's going to be cycling through the macro and just going through your main abilities, which are flanking strike, carve, and of course, mongoose bite. That's pretty much what the macro is going to be cycling through mainly. Uh, and so, yeah, flanking strikes, obviously important. And then carve, if you have that rune, it's going to use that. If not, don't worry about it. It'll just get past it. And then if you do manage to dodge at any point, you will use mongoose bite, of course. And that's basically it. So, you know, mainly just going to be doing a lot of flanking strikes unless you have the carve rune. So then we get down here to key press and key release under key press. These will both of these will be going off every time you press the button. You have your standard targeting stuff. And then of course, if you don't have a pet, the macro will call your pet. So if for whatever reason you're using Lone Wolf, you might wanna remove this from the macro. Uh, and then of course, if your pet dies, you will need to manage revive pet on a separate button. It's just a little finicky with the macro. Uh, but if your pet isn't dead and it's not summoned, the macro will summon it for you. And then the macro will send your pet to attack your current target. And it will also start your auto attack, which is very important because you're melee and you always wanna be swinging your weapon. Now. In Classic WoW, pet attack can be a little finicky, so be careful that you're not accidentally sending your pet to attack an enemy that you don't want to. Just be mindful of that if you are spamming away at the macro, that can happen, so please do be careful. Under key release is where we do finally have Raptor Strike. You've probably been wondering where that's at. Raptor Strike kind of works like an off global cooldown ability. It basically turns your next melee swing into a Raptor Strike. So that one we are able to put under key release. Essentially, as you're spamming the macro, this ability is going to be going off whenever it's available. And that's how that's going to be working. So it just don't have to put it in the main macro sequence. It won't bog that down. And it's pretty straightforward. So this is the most straightforward macro that I've made so far. It's an incredibly easy class to play. It's pretty fun, honestly. And like I said, I was able to start doing this fairly early. It's really resource efficient. You don't have to worry about your ammo. You really don't have to worry about mana at all, which is nice. But the macro is basically going to be flying through your abilities, using them on cooldown, whichever ones you do have. If you manage to get a mongoose bite off, that's cool. Otherwise, if you have carve, it's going to keep that on cooldown. It's going to be using flanking strike on cooldown and using raptor strike as well on cooldown as much as it can. Now, since you are playing classic WoW, melee swings are very important. You need to keep track of your weapon swing timer the best you can. You know, you can use an add on or a weak aura for this. Since I'm visually impaired, I just kind of go off of rhythm and just kind of feel it out. And so what I do is in between my swings, like right after I swing, I'll start to spam the macro a little bit. And then right before I'm about to swing again, I'll stop spamming and let the auto attack go off. And then I'll go back to spamming again. It sounds a little complicated, but it's honestly not that bad. Like you're just kind of weaving in your, your ability 
release in between swings the best you can. It's not that big a deal. And hey, you know what? We're using a macro, so if we miss a couple auto attacks, it's really not that big a deal. We're not too worried about min maxing here because we are using a macro, and that just kind of, you know, kind of takes away the min maxing from the equation a little bit. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise, it's a really straightforward macro. It works really well. It's a lot of fun to play. You know, let me know what you think about this in the comments below if you check it out. With all that being said, I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know by clicking that like button. And feel free to share it with your friends so they can enjoy it as well. And if you'd like to see more videos, you can subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be notified as soon as new videos are posted. You can also follow me on Facebook, and if you'd like, you can support my work on Patreon. Links to all that stuff can be found in the description below. This is Kefis, until next time.